Hi there, uh, Earthlings. How are we today? I uh, must first off apologise um, for the lateness of things over this weekend. Obviously, we've done the Just Face Great Grand Giveaway. It was done yesterday evening. Uh, live on uh, MrJustFake.co.uk, Saturday Night Shenanigans. And today and over the weekend, I've accepted a private commission um, for an appeal video. Um, this is a. Uh, but it's a commission, so you know, I'm getting paid for it, and this is one of the true. So, yeah, I've got to pay the bills. Today, we're going to talk about this puppy the Steampunk Bible. It is an amazing book. If you want to know anything about Steampunk, this is a really, really good place to start. To really know Steampunk, you have to be into Steampunk. Alright, now I was into Steampunk before I got this book. And um, obviously, since me and Ryan got to know each other, it has become quite a big part of our lives. Actually, Steampunk. Um, we oh, hello, I've got the leaky bottle. Okay, that's not good. Um, but anyway, joys of being a dripping atomizer user, I suppose. Um, so yeah, um, you yeah, know, it's become a great big part. I mean, he was always pretty diesel punk. There's an interesting section which I'll find in a minute and show you um, about all the various different types of steampunk there is. Now, I consider myself, when it comes to types of steampunk, um, a cross between true steampunk, a clock punk, a mana punk, and a gaslight romance punk, I think. Because I sort of took the identity of General Shea, which you know, if you in an airship you generally considered navy, so you'd be a captain ordinarily, but my history is military, army, and so therefore general for me. Um so yeah, uh and so I'd, I'd like to make things, I like to lead, um I also like to, you know, a lot of good story and good history and background and all that sort of thing and uh, I also have quite an artistic flair which most of you who know me will know that I, I love drawing and painting and stuff like that so it kind of puts me not sort of into a cross section of these various different uh, I'll say genders of steampunk and I'm just trying to find the page where it describes for such things because the introduction of that particular chapter is just legendarily awesome. Um, here we are. I believe the title of the chapter is actually something, something along the lines of... Um, no, here we are. Metal men, baroque airships and clockwork worlds. The fiction, illustrated narratives and the stories behind the stories. There you go. Boiler punk, clock punk, diesel punk. Gaslight Romance, Manners Punk, Reagan Gothic and Stitch Punk and all of those have their own subcategories again. So I'm a nice little mashup. Right falls quite nicely into Diesel Punk and the joy of it was it can all work together. And this book describes as of I'm going to have a list about 2003 or 2004. A quick loop. Hey. I apologise for all this. Here we go. Uh, la, 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 la. 2011, actually, it's a lot later than I thought. This literally covers everything old literature, new literature, fashion, music, the making side of things, all the different types of punk that there is all the different mishmashes, various um, people of note within the steampunk uh, industry and lifestyle. And uh, of course, my favourite is Abney Park, make two appearances actually within the book. Um, and it just shows how, how accessible and how easy it is to become a steampunk. So I do really, really, really highly recommend the Steampunk Bible. Come on, be 
in your steampunk, I had to get a brass one, didn't I? I must say that was a gift actually, so uh, thank you very much to uh, Brother Bear. Um, but no, I digress, I digress. I mean, earlier today I was talking um, with Gary Dibley, and I mentioned to him that, you know, yeah, I have made e cigarettes, and we're talking from a building stuff point of view, sort of loosely over the past couple of days, past couple of weeks actually. And um, I mentioned that, yeah, I've had to go building e cigarettes, and I've built a steampunk one, which I've left downstairs rather conveniently. But, he, you know, he seems to be quite impressed with it, or at least that's what he typed in response. Personally, I think it looks fucking awful, but, you know, there's no one more deprecating with their own work than the person who created it themselves, right? Otherwise, it's just an egotistical, overinflated asshole, if you ask me. Always go find something wrong in your own work, I think, because then you improve better. Um, and so, you know, that's taken many different elements of um, Victorian look. This is where I get the gaslight, romantic sort of thing going on. And my dog's going nuts. Apologies. Um, that's because the next door's annoying 13 year old girl is still outside my map. I'm going to shoot her. Be right back. Turns out it was an extra annoying 13 year old child. It was actually a husky. Um, as whole dog is. <coughs> anyway, I digress. Uh, where was I? I can't actually remember. Yes, that's like romance. Um, you know, it's it's a case of you know this whole empire thing going on. You know, imperial England and whatnot, get out of the colonies and shit, and you know, inventing and contra contra contractualizing. I suppose it just makes it up as you go along. It's great, um, but of course, there's the gear punk and or clock punk, if you want to call it, and the elements of mana punk as well, because I do like to look smart, speak well. And behave, be a gentleman, which has led into quite um, quite naturally and very readily into another vein of things called trap hop. And if you don't know who Professor Elemental and Mr. B are by now, I'm certain I've mentioned them before. Go look them up. I'll put some links to their um, their YouTube's in the description below, and you gotta go check them out. I mean, Mr. B is hilarious. Um, crack song, uh, Armitage Shanks. Uh, oh Santa, that's one of my favourite Christmas songs ever, and I hate Christmas. And Mr. Um, Professor Elemental, uh, Fighting Trousers, uh, The Golden Frog, although that's more of an audio play than it is an actual song or an album or anything, but do listen to The Golden Frog, it's brilliant. <coughs> um, and, you know, time for tea. Tea. <laughs> Which kind of explains my mind's obsession with Earl Grey, really, apart from the Star Trek element as well. Earl Grey gets bloody everywhere, really, doesn't it? Well, so there you go. Anyway, it's enough whiffling for me today about um, steampunk. Uh, so, go, if, you, if you are truly interested in steampunk, go buy the steampunk Bible. It is a absolute treasure trove for the beginner, the, no the novice, the noob. And you could do much worse for an introduction. Um, to um, steampunk, and of course, it's keeping up our okay, literary uh, traditions and um, introduces you to some classic classics. I mean, if you've read anything like Jules Verne or you know, Time Machine and all that sort of business, um, you, you you already read steampunk because it's considered the earliest forms of. And there's, there's this great um, section in here about uh, authors actually in literature. Before I go, which I'd like to read out. Uh, about one of mine and Ryan's favourite old school authors. And that would be, he's just a Poe boy from a Poe family, Edgar Allan. Poe. 
Uh, we do love us a bit of power. I've got the complete works downstairs, which I must go and sit and read through again. So I do absolutely love. The thing I love about Poe is it was actually a hoaxer. Ah, here we go. Edgar Allan Poe, perpetrator of the first steampunk hoax. Now, uh, it's a very short piece, so I will. Um, hang on, does it continue on? Yeah, it's, it's a very short piece, but I'll read it out. I'll read only part of it anyway. Edgar Allan Poe is often portrayed in popular culture as a tortured dark figure, but in pulling off a string of hoaxes in print, he displayed as a, a mischievous, prankly sense of humour. While Poe wrote several stories in a plausible vein, the best and most famous is the balloon hoax. Airships. Uh, he published it in the New York Sun as a newspaper article on April 13, 1844. It described the then improbable balloon voyage across the Atlantic, completed within 75 hours. And it goes, if you look back at some of the readings myself and Ryan did with um, uh, Derek Kewden from Halloween last year, uh, I read a couple of excerpts from the balloon hoax, which um, are probably the first ever steampunk, or possibly only steampunk hoax ever. So even if you've never read Poe, do actually give the balloon hoax a good read, because it is quite amusing if you can sort of think in that Victorian era uh, style of humour. And the people, right? bloody, what's his name? Um, Wells, Ward Wells, and everybody gone mental all that, yeah? Believe in all that, yeah? Yeah, Poe did it first. Probably several people did it before him, but Poe, media, hoax, people believed his shit, 1844, April, check it out. Right, I've been fury, I want to wrap this up now, you lot, as always, have been gorgeous, love you, love it. Uh, if you want to be a parpling, please don't hesitate to contact us, we are working on a special guest, a very special guest parpling, we want to have a number two parpling. Um, but only when he, once he comes back from holiday, unless he decides to do one from holiday. Um, which would be really nice actually. And there's a dent in my helmet. Wouldn't be the first time. So yes, if you want to be a part of contact myself or a Ryan across our Facebook or so from the social media links below. So take care of yourselves and I'll see you on Sunday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs> Peace. Yeah.